guys, it's Norm for The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 7, Time for After, and needless to say, I wasn't really looking forward to this episode. You guys know I was not at all a fan of last week's episode. In fact, I pretty much hated last week's episode. I thought it was completely the wrong direction for the show. It had so many characters just not acting like they should, and this episode was an improvement. I definitely will say that. Uh, I'm not saying it was necessarily a great episode, but it was good. I did think there was stuff in here that I did overall enjoy. But again, the show is suffering from the same problems, and that's it's really just dragging things out, and a lot of these characters keep going back and forth, and it's it's just hard to tell what anyone's really thinking anymore, where everyone's head is at. It's just very confusing at this point, and uh, not in a good way. Not in a way where it's like, oh, the show wants you to feel the way. The show wants you to feel like these characters are genuinely confused. It just seems like they're writing these characters differently every single week, and I definitely did feel that in this episode. But let's just get this episode, because I definitely do want to talk about it. So we start off with Rick. He's locked up inside a cargo container by Jadis and the Scavengers. And let me just say, I don't give a shit about Jadis. Honestly, after this episode, I really do not care for her as a character, uh, especially these last two episodes. Honestly, like, I was upset before they weren't really giving her a lot to do, but after these two episodes, you you honestly can go back to that, because I, I really am not a fan of this character. Um, we see it begins with Rick. He's alone. He's swaying inside the container. The door opens and reveals he's only wearing his boxers and his hands are tied. He reminds them at all it's not too late to join them. So she takes Rick's photo as one of the scavengers draws his picture. Jadis reveals the pictures will be used to sculpt him after, which I don't know what the scavenger's obsession with sculpting is and all this stuff, but it's honestly really weird. I, I don't really get what this is all about. She doesn't explain what she means by after, but it sounds very ominous and back at the sanctuary most of this episode focuses on the character of Eugene. Yes, everyone's favorite character right now, and by that I mean it's the character that probably should have died seasons ago, and yet he's still on this show for some reason, and this episode in general, it just shows how confusing of a character he really is. He makes a list of what he knows and doesn't know. He closes the notepad before he writes down a single item. He then visits with Dwight, acknowledging that he knows that Dwight is the traitor, and he also reveals Negan's charged him with finding the traitor, and if Dwight stops, Eugene promises he won't give away his secret. So, basically... I like that he tells Dwight this, that, oh, I'm not going to rat you out. You know, you're on, I'm on your side for the most part. And Dwight explains the saviors and Negan are done. Supplies are running low. The workers are scared. And if Eugene lets everything play out, he'll come out on the winning side. If not, then Eugene will have blood on his hands. And Eugene claims he just wants to be safe. It doesn't appear he's changing his mind about supporting Negan anytime soon. Still, he won't seem to tell Negan about Dwight if Dwight doesn't make it so that anyone left in the building is harmed. So... As long as he doesn't harm anyone, then everything's going to be fine, and that Dwight, you know, will not be ratted out here. So Eugene heads downstairs. There are hundreds of walkers attempting to get in. A saver tells him she believes they'll make it through the, into the building in no more than a day or two. And next we see Dr. Carson. He tells Eugene that Gabriel only has a few days left until they can get medication. Eugene understands why Gabriel was part of the attack on the complex. Remember, he got um, bitten in that complex, but he doesn't really forgive him for it. And the doctor makes Eugene stay with his friend while he looks for anything that could possibly help Gabriel, and uh, Gabriel at this point can barely speak. Eugene compares his physical state to that of a potato and shit casserole. It's obvious Gabriel's in bad shape. I don't know if they're going to kill off the character, but it very much seems like that's where we're headed here, but he once again asks Eugene to help him get Dr. Carson out of the sanctuary. Eugene reminds him he doesn't stick his neck out for anyone, and again, we have the same conversation we had two episodes ago. It seemed like he was on board with getting him out of the complex. Why all of a sudden is Eugene not okay with this it just it, it doesn't make sense here and Gabriel wants him to do the right thing Eugene however isn't sure what the definition of the right thing is Eugene doesn't have faith in God if or that there's a, a bigger plan Gabriel says it's not difficult to believe Eugene will know the right thing to do is when the time comes he believes he'll act appropriately at the right time and again I just don't get this I mean we end episode five and Eugene's like yes I want to help you get uh Dr. Carson out I want to get him out of prison and now you know I, I want to get him out of you know um I, I want to get him away from the saviors and bring him to Maggie so that way 
way everything's, you know, gonna go great there. But now all of a sudden, he's, like, conflicted about it. It just doesn't make any sense. I think it pretty much sums up the writing as a whole. You can tell these writers pretty much just writing as they go along, and, uh, we very much do see that here. And speaking of writing as we go along, we then see Morgan, who, again, is such a confusing character. They go back and forth with him constantly, but in this episode, he's scoping out the walkers outside the sanctuary, and in contact via radio with other snipers, they realize the truck that's just pulled up is actually one of theirs, so Tonya that visits Eugene's room asking me fixed her boombox. He still can't believe she's worried about that, but she wants her music. Their deal was for two bottles of liquor when the repair was completed, but he asked for the second bottle in advance. He claims that he needs it to sleep. Tonya reminds him he could have made the place better when he first arrived, but instead he only took care of himself, and she gives him the bottle telling him that it won't help him sleep, and uh... I don't really know what she's telling him here. Like, is she trying to say that, oh, you know, you could have just made things better and turned things around? I mean, everyone seemed like they were on Negan's side at that point. So I, I don't really see how Eugene could have done that rather than just fit in with Negan. I don't see how else Eugene could have fit himself in there. Um, He had to kind of acclimate to Negan's standards. So I, I don't get it. I, I really honestly don't get it. But... Uh, Daryl then wants Tara, Rosita, and Michonne to cover him while he crashes the truck into the sanctuary, and once again, these characters, just really, really dumb, honestly, because Rick has a plan here, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, Rick's plans never work out. This season, that's not the case. Rick is, I think, the person that we should be rooting for, and honestly, just listen to Rick, honestly. Listen to Rick. I know they don't know, you know, what's going on with Rick right now, but the walkers will then be able to enter the building, and they're gonna attack the saviors, and... There's just no way this is actually going to work out. Um, there are no more big weapons housed in the Savior's building, so they believe that they'll be okay. It's a cool plan, but again, it's not what Rick wants. And when you have an army like this, the best thing to do is just listen to the leader. And I don't know why they're all just deviating from Rick. And they're just you know, doing their own thing. It doesn't make any sense. It seems like they're only doing it just to create all this unnecessary drama to drag things out, and I, I just don't see the point. Especially Michonne. Why the hell would Michonne do this? I mean, Michonne is Rick's girlfriend. There's no reason why she should not listen to Rick. I, I just don't really get it at all, but Morgan walks up, says he and the other snipers will have their backs. They have a debate over whether to act now or follow Rick, Rick's plans, and Tara's have said she waited once before, but Rosita still believes in Rick. She leaves a group and not before making sure that Michonne is good with the decision. Rosita believes they need to wait. And again, I, I don't get this. Rosita was the one last season who was so adamant about attacking Negan and going after them immediately. Why all of a sudden is she now going, you know, backwards and saying, oh, now I don't know why we need to do that. But she appears the rest of the team are dead set on crashing into the building. I don't know why Rosita is just outnumbered here, but it doesn't make any sense with the character. Negan then sits alone in the meeting room and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, honestly, I feel more and more bad for this dude as the season goes on, because Jeffrey Dean Morgan is fantastic as his character, but they're not using him to his full potential at all, and look, I know there are a lot of people who don't like this portrayal of Negan, but the fact is, he's supposed to be our big bad. He's supposed to be the one that shows, oh yeah, this is what the mission's about, this is why we're taking this guy down, this is what really is going on here. But I, they're just not doing it right. They're not showing him enough. They're using him way too sparingly, and we need to start seeing more of Negan. He, like I said, is supposed to be our big threat here, and I just don't feel like he's that much of a threat anymore because they're barely acknowledging him. It's like they're just kind of pushing him to the side and only use him when they need to, and it's just not working. It's really not, and I want to see more of this character, um mainly just because of how great Jeffrey Dean Morgan is this character, but also because he is supposed to be our villain, and they're not using him to their potential at all here. But anyway, he motions Eugene and assures him he doesn't want to let the saviors die, even though he knows that they will survive, and Negan recognizes that Eugene is smart, and he wants to make sure Eugene knows he knows that. He offers Eugene his hand, Eugene goes to kiss it, Negan then snatches it away, saying he was only offering it for a handshake, and he reminds Eugene he doesn't shake hands often as it's a sign of mutual respect, and back in his bedroom, Eugene is working on the boombox. He's staring at its speaker. He heads down to a storage area as he looks for parts. He spots Sasha's coffin and pauses, pauses for a moment. He's very emotional before opening it to retrieve her iPod and 
if you were really that emotional, then why didn't you do something about it? Why didn't you try to help out Sasha in some way? I mean, Eugene seemed like he was so loyal to Negan that he was only looking for Negan's best interest, that he didn't care what happened to Sasha. So why all of a sudden is he now upset that Sasha died? It just, again, it doesn't make any sense for the character in any way, but Morgan then watches Daryl Michonne and Tara drive the truck closer to the sanctuary. Morgan tells Daryl to cut the engine so he won't draw the walkers attention. Tension. Michonne doesn't look completely committed to this plan, and she suggests to Daryl that maybe they should trust the old plan will keep working. She doesn't think this new plan is worth risking them. Daryl replies that it's for him. Michonne tells him she hopes it works, but that she can't do it, and Tara's still on board, as are the four snipers when Michonne then leaves. Eugene has built this remote control airplane. He's going to use it to play music and lead the walkers away. He makes a recording of what he's doing, pause it will be successful, and just as he's about to launch it, Dwight then sneaks up, tells him not not to turn around. I don't know how he actually thought this plan was going to work, but basically, Tara gets in the position. Morgan snipers are ready for Daryl and his truck. Dwight tells Eugene to back away from the airplane. Eugene can't believe Dwight would kill everyone inside the building, and Dry reminds him it means that Negan will kill Rick and all the others, and if Eugene launches this plane, Dwight says they're just traveling companions and not friends, so he's okay with that, and Eugene doesn't believe Negan can be killed by anyone, and he has a remote control ready to push to launch, and I don't get this. Like, wh what does Eugene want here? Why does he think that Negan is going to stay alive. I mean, Dwight is literally telling him, look, dude, the saviors are dead. There's no way of getting out of this. Why isn't Eugene convinced here? I mean, I just... I don't get it. I don't get what they're doing with this character. It's very confusing and not in a good way. It's honestly really baffling to me. I don't get why they're going this direction here, but basically... Uh, Dwight then continues to point the gun at Eugene's head, but he allows him to launch the plane, doesn't shoot. And look, I will say, um, the actor who plays Eugene was really good in this scene, but it doesn't, um, you know, excuse what the character is doing here and how inconsistent this character is. I mean, most of these characters are very inconsistent, but Eugene especially is very inconsistent. And as much as I do like Josh McDermott, it might be time to retire this character. I, I, it honestly might be time. This episode really does show that, but... Um, basically, J Daryl then drives the truck toward the building as Dwight shoots the plane out of the air, and outside the fence, the snipers and Tara begin firing into the building to cover for Daryl. Daryl then rolls out of the truck as the truck smashes into the building. Daryl and Tara then escape while the walkers pour into the sanctuary, and the saviors shoot the walkers, but there are just too many of them. They flee into the upper levels, and the walkers continue to make their way inside. Eugene watches as it all goes down. He's completely stunned. Even Dwight is shooting at the walkers. They begin feasting on the saviors, and Eugene then charges into Father Gabe Gabriel's room, tells him he's not on board with helping Dr. Carson escape, and he goes off on a rant saying that he will survive and he will help Negan, he'll turn in traitors and do whatever he has to do to live, so again, I don't get this, before he told him, okay, maybe I'll do it, I'm kind of on the fence about it, so why is he now adamant about not helping him, it just... It seems like they're just writing this character as they go along, like I said. He then meets with Negan and tells him he needs his machines back to make more ammunition to save the sanctuary. Negan reminds him that when he gets out of free out of this mess, he'll dump a shit storm on Rick. Eugene's okay with that and, in fact, feels great that he can help Negan win the saviors. And Eugene's about to reveal that Dwight is the traitor when a few saviors arrive, including Dwight. And Negan tells him Eugene has solved this mess. And instead of revealing Dwight as the traitor, he says he can fix the intercon system to help with communication. So... I don't get this. I really don't get this. He knew, he told Dwight, correct me if I'm wrong, but he literally said to Dwight in the beginning of this episode, you are in the clear as long as you don't try to kill anyone. And what did Dwight just try to do? Try to kill someone. So why is Eugene going back on that promise and not outing Dwight? I just, I don't get it. It seems like it's only there for plot convenience. They want Eugene to be the one to save everyone. And I just, I, I don't get why they're doing this with him turns to his room. He's crying. He's only in this for himself. He didn't turn to Dwight when he had the chance. He downed some alcohol and then throws up, and Rick's finally let out of the cargo container, and I say finally, but we barely saw him in this episode. He's walked down into the center of the scavenger's compound. He's forced to kneel as a walker is let out to Jadis, and she says, time for after. Rick then springs into action. He attacks any scavengers who enters the area, use the walker as a weapon. He finally removes the walker's head and attacks Jadis, and he's able to get Jadis' gun away from her. He's surrounded by scavengers, holding 
telling Jadis inches from the walker's mouth. He reiterates that he's leaving. However, he warns them his people will return to kill them all. He suggests that after he leaves, they all run. And Jadis instructs her people to lower their weapons. Rick leans in, asks Jadis if they're done. She agrees. He helps her to stand. She asks what will happen if she joins them. He explains the sanctuary is completely surrounded by walkers. And when the time comes, the saviors will surrender to his group. He will then kill Negan himself. She agrees, but wants him to pose naked for a sculpture, which I guess this is Titanic now. I don't know why she wanted him to do this. It just, it seems so random, but Rick luckily refuses to demand. They finally settle on the scavengers, getting a fourth of the saver's property when it's all done. He arrives with the scavengers a distance from the sanctuary to find walkers eating people. The snipers don't answer when he calls them on the walkie-talkie, so he climbs the water tower. He's shocked to see a hole in the side of the sanctuary, realize the walkers have all entered the building, and that is the way this episode ends. Look, Here's my thing with this episode. Like I said, this wasn't a bad episode in terms of events. Like, it wasn't boring, but there's just so many things here that make no logical sense whatsoever. First of all, let's just get to the main plotline here with Rick. What was the point of this? Seriously, what was the point of this? She she holds him hostage so she can paint him naked, and that she's now this, this sculpture who wants to paint Rick. I don't get where this came from. I don't get why they took this direction with Jadis. It seems like the only reason they did this again is to just stall things out. I don't know if this is something that happens in the comics, but this makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know why they're going in this direction with her. Um, but honestly, I really just wish they didn't use the character because I would have definitely preferred them just forget about her character than give her this bullshit that she has to deal with. Because, again, I don't think the actress is bad. I don't think the actress is the problem here. But they don't know what they're... I don't know what they're doing with this character. I don't know why she's a main character, honestly. And it doesn't really make a ton of sense. But, yeah, all this stuff with Jadis, I just did not see the point of. Um, but don't even get me started on Eugene. Eugene as a character is dead, honestly. This character is done for. There's no reason for this character to still be on the show. He at this point is dead weight. I am so done with this character. And again, it has nothing to do with the actor. I think Josh McDermott is fantastic. I think he does a great job on the show. But the character, let's face it, the character's run its course. I mean, this episode definitely shows the character's run its course. And it's so confusing, too, because one second he's like, okay, I'm going to help you with Dr. Carson. I'm going to get Dr. Carson out. We're going to do this together. Then the next thing he's like, uh, I don't know about that. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, no, no, I'm definitely not getting Dr. Carson out. It's just like, dude, what do you actually want to do here? Do you actually want to help Dr. Carson? Why Why are you giving people promises and that you're not living up to them? I mean, he literally told Dwight that if you kill anyone, then, you know, then we're going to have a problem. And I'm going to out you to Negan. So why did he then forego that promise when he actually had the opportunity to do so and he when he caught Dwight actually killing people? And the only reason I could see him foregoing that is because they need to keep Dwight on the show because Dwight is a main character and Dwight is one of the only ounces of humanity we have left within the Saviors. So they just need to keep him on for that reason and that's the only reason why. Everything's just happening because plot. Nothing's happening because it actually makes logical sense. Same with all these characters. Why are these characters deviating from Rick? Seriously, just listen to Rick. Rick actually knows what he's doing. Sure, Rick's had a lot of plans that are really dumb, but this season he knows what he's doing and he has some good ideas so I don't know why they're not just listening to Rick I don't know why they thought Rick's not going to help them out especially Michonne I don't know why Michonne's being disloyal to Rick again it just seems like they're giving us all this unnecessary drama just to drag things out and I don't get the point of them doing that at all uh, I thought it was honestly really dumb. And then Negan, honestly, I feel worse and worse for Jeffrey D. Morgan as the season goes on because they're just not using him at all. And I get it that people are not a fan of this interpretation of Negan, but he's supposed to be our big threat. He's supposed to be like the governor. And he's not living up to his potential at all. They're not using him in the way they should. If Negan dies in the next episode, I'm going to be severely pissed because they have not at all used this character to his full potential. I'm really hoping they just drag this out till the end of this season because they just have not used this character well at all and normally would be at the point of the show where I'd be speculating what's going to happen in the mid-season finale to be honest, I don't care. I, I really don't care what goes down in this mid-season finale. I'm hearing rumors that, like, Carl might be killed and whatnot, but I just don't care. I, I really don't at this point. Honestly, guys, I, I just don't really care what goes on in the show anymore because the writers clearly don't care. I mean, Rosita Forks, take, take what they did with Rosita, for example. 
she, for some reason in this episode, is so fixated on, oh, you know, we can't possibly attack them, you know, we gotta listen to Rick, Rick knows what he's talking about, uh, you know, we can't just attack the saviors, um, but hold on for a second, Rosita, weren't you the one who last season was so adamant about going after the saviors and attacking them? Why all of a sudden are you now going to the other side? Why all of a sudden are you not wanting to attack the saviors? I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's so out of character and I don't get what these writers are doing. It's so baffling. It doesn't seem like it has any sort of logic whatsoever. There is no logic in this show. There is no, um rationale in the show nothing really makes a lick of sense and uh i'm just gonna accept that and accept that the show is just mindless tv at this point and it's sad because i think these actors have a lot more potential than that. i think they could be doing a lot more with them but they're just not utilizing them very well and maybe that'll change the mid-season finale because usually mid-season finale is when it's like they get their shit together but we'll just have to see the way that really does turn out Overall, guys, once again, this was another very disappointing episode. It was better than last week, uh, definitely, for sure, but uh, it's still not saying too much. And I am going to give The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 7, Time for After, a C. So over, guys, in this episode of The Walking Dead, the most guys saw this episode overall, left your thoughts on it. I guess I'm looking forward to this season finale next week, but again, I just don't really have much anticipation for it. This show, I just kind of watched to review it for you guys at this point, and that's really it. But that's in my review. Hope you're enjoying. I'll see you guys in my next video, and I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.